the vacuum pump is here I'm basically just going to pull off that vacuum hose and put uh, a gauge in there and check so then it's going to start up the car I'm going to be monitoring uh, the the vacuum how fast it pulls the vacuum on it and when he applies the brakes like how far or like how far it will go back and how fast again it will co come back to zero or like close to zero connected the vacuum pump but what we are going to use we're only going to use the gauge that's important for us at the moment so i connected here to the vacuum line which one one junction goes to the uh, brake booster and the other one goes, I guess that goes from down below uh, to the turbos and the solenoids and wastegates and so on. So I, I just have that rubber hose extension and connect it to the vacuum pump. Sorry. Uh, yeah, small vacuum pump. And now we are going to monitor the, the vacuum. So then it's going to start up the car. And what we want to see, we want to see that the vacuum is applied like quite fast. So it goes back about 25 uh, inches in mercury is fine or more around, let's say 90 kPa because this is the other way around. So you, you see here negative 100 kPa and on the dash, like the brand new vacuum pump on the dike supposed to be 7.6. So if you deduct 7.6, from uh, 100 it is uh, 90 what's that 92.4 so basically what you want to see is 92 kPa so that is the zero point and once once we are there then it's going to apply like a break um, like press the brake like a oh, lot of times and we, we don't want to that go back to zero because that is 100 on the live data i may try to show it on at the same time on the live data as well and on the gauge but basically when he applies so on the live data it is showing rising numbers but in here it is showing like again like it's it's rising numbers because from minus 100 to zero it is basically rising um because the, the the most vacuum you can or the in the in on earth there is only minus one uh, vacuum what you can pull or what, what can be possible if if i'm if i'm correct so anyways then it's going to be then it's going to start up the car and we want to see that needle dropping uh, nearly to 100 the fastest as it, as it can and once the car will be running or idling we don't want to be that needle go back to to zero like quite quickly or easily when he is applying the brake so i'll ask then to start up the car and we will perform the test so as you could see the the needle went back or went down quite quickly And now, but then it's going to apply the brake a couple times, or a lot of times, and it shouldn't go back to zero. So let me try to explain basically what happened. So when then applied or when then started the car, it pulled vacuum on it. So the vacuum pump was working. It pulled quite fast. So it was continuous pulling. It wasn't like a stopping at, at, at bad places and then pulling from there. So it was quite quick. Um, and also when he applied the brake, it went obviously back or closer to zero, but it didn't reach zero. So I think the maximum vacuum he could or like he could do like 95 kPa on the brake booster pressure sensor. As I said, I may do like a video with the with the scan tool on the live data. But um, from this, we can say that the vacuum pump is working properly. Although I still suspect that it can be faulty or intermittently faulty or something else, because because the fault code appeared when I pressed the brake. So basically, the brake brakes needed the vacuum and then it uh, happened uh, so then the the fault code was triggered obviously now the egr valve is uh, swapped 
So I'm going to test drive once my girlfriend arrives with the key from the BMW. I'm going for a test drive and test it and see it. But usually when I when I was when I've done four test drives, the Ford came back after five miles. So I think I don't have to go quite far or too far or too long. So you yeah, stay tuned if you want to know how the issue is solved, if it is ever solved or what was the outcome.